Okay, so today's project is something a little bit different. I'm not making a bag today, guys and gals and anyone else who might be watching. Um, I'm doing something um, that I came up with during what I like to call creative play. Now, creative play is something that I became familiar with back when I was paper crafting a lot. And so this is the project that we're going to be making today. Now, this is a Midori style um, traveler's notebook. Um, they're often done in leather. Um, I've seen people do them with paper and cardstock. Um, th in this case, I'm going to be using cotton and cork to make the cover. So this is one that I've previously made. And I do make all of my inserts for them as well. And if you'd like to see how I do those, um, I will say that I did sew these on my sewing machine. Um, I would not recommend doing these on a domestic machine. An industrial machine, absolutely. It'll go through this paper, this thickness, um, like a hot knife through butter. But I would not do it on a domestic machine. So this book, or this particular cover, holds six books. And we're going to be making the same size today. I have my six books that I've made previously here. And so I'm going to set these aside. So that I can move this, these things out of the way. Now if you want a charm, you're going to need a charm and a jump ring for that. Um, you're also going to need some elastic cord. Um, as well as your grommets and your grommet setter kit. And I'll put a link to that particular kit in the description box below. So, to get started, you're going to need to know how many books you want your folder, your cover to hold. And you're going to need to measure them. So, I've measured all of these. So you're going to measure the front and back and the thickness here. And then you're going to add a little bit for overhang on the cover and so it's got a little bit of wiggle room in there. You don't want your your books to stick out past your cover like that. So we want a nice a nice fit. So these I think I measured this at about an inch and a half. I did. It's actually only an inch and a quarter but I measured it at an inch and a half because squeezing them it's not going to be a tight fit like that necessarily. So I'm going with an inch and a half and that's just at a a, you know, if they're stacked like this, they're going to come up to about an inch and a half. Um, my cover is four inches. And these measurements are good for me to know as well because for the spine, I put rows of stitching at a quarter inch apart. And this just helps the fold and it keeps everything where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to set these aside and bring back over my fabrics here. So this is 10 by 9 and a half. Um, my books are 9 inches tall, so I added a half an inch. That's a quarter inch overhang on the top and bottom. So 10 by 9 and a half. These edges will be left raw, so if you use vinyl or something like that, um, and there won't be any turning either. Um, and I'll go over how we're going to do that in just a moment. Um, but if you want to edge coat the edges, go ahead and do that before you get started. So my stabilizer is cut at the same as my exterior, which is nine and a half by 10. And then my lining fabric is just a piece of quilting cotton in black. Um, it's not been stabilized or interfaced or anything like that. It doesn't need to be, not for this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is this is just cut at least an inch larger than your stabilizer. And I'm using Decaville Light here. Um, just enough so that you're going to have a fold over. And you can see this isn't square. I just roughly cut it out. Um, but you're going to want to be able to fold these edges over after you iron your Decaville onto, or whatever stabilizer you're using, onto your lining fabric. And so I'm going to iron that on now. Move these things out of the way. Guys, I recovered this ironing board, and the first time I used it, I used uh, the disappearing ink marker. It didn't disappear. When I put fabric on this thing, it transferred onto my board and stayed there. All right, so I'm just going to iron this on, and then we'll move on to the next step. 
So the next step we're going to do is to run a piece of double-sided adhesive all the way around just to fold our, our edges over and adhere. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to talk a little bit more about creative play. So I think creative play is important, especially when we reach a point where we're burned out. When we get that way, a lot of us will say we've lost our sojo or our crojo, our crafty mojo or our sewing mojo. And so creative play, just sitting down with some scrap materials um, without any sort of project in mind and just brainstorming and coming up with something different, something that you would find interesting to do, can sometimes help get your creative mojo back. And so this is one of those projects that I found helped me. And who knows, maybe it'll help you something different it's something small it doesn't require a whole lot of thought and you've got something useful in the end now if you um if you're not making your own inserts and you're ordering them online your measurements are not going to be the same as mine of course and that's going to give you you know that's going to be a little more thought going into it than using my measurements, but you know what, that's okay. I'm just burnishing this down. And so I want some nice clean corners on this. So what I'm going to do is grab my little tool over here, get the right one, to pull up just the corners of my, my tape. I'm going to do this on all four corners and fold in the corner just like that. All right, so on each of these corners, I'm going to put another little piece of adhesive right across there. And that's just so that they don't have anything that's going to lift up on the, on the, around the corners. I want this to be nice and neat all the way around. Okay, now that's that, that's done. I'm going to start on this side. So I'm going to pull these two pieces off and this piece along the edge. Oops. Make sure that we're... Okay. You're not going to cooperate with me, are you? Of course not. I'm going to use my brayer here and roll that. Make sure that we're stuck down really well. Sorry about the squeaky. All right, I'm going to do the same thing all the way around. All right, so that bit is done. Now, if you want to go around this with masking tape and hold that down, you can do that. I'm actually going to take a little bit of duct tape and just go in the corners to make sure that they stay nice and crisp. Okay, so I've got a little bit of duct tape around on my corners there. So this piece is actually pretty much ready to go. And I'm going to line my lining up with my exterior make sure that I'm not really not overhanging anywhere so it does overhang slightly you know what I'm not going to stress it actually was this the wrong way nope it's the right way Well, you could use some double-sided adhesive and just stick this down. I'm not going to bother with that. Now we're going to take this over to the machine and sew at an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then we'll get to that middle line that has pretty much disappeared at this point. We'll draw it again. That's okay. All right, so let's go to the machine and get this part done. Okay, so I have black in my bobbin thread. 
have in here or it'll match my lining and I have gray as my top thread to match my exterior you can use a coordinating contrasting thread as you like but I'm going to start right here an eighth of an inch from the edge and I'm using a top stitching length of about a five So here's our cover all stitched together. Of course I had to go with black for this one. It's gonna everything is going to catch it, every piece of lint, but you know what? It's not that big a deal. It's alright. Um, we're attached nicely all the way around. I do have a little bit of thread there. There we go. So now to secure, make sure that this is nice and secure for the spine and it's going to have a nice bend. I'm going to start making a line in the center, going back over the line that we, we did previously. Make sure we're lined up here. And I only need to make one line. I'm going to use um, the edge of my presser foot at my machine to do the subsequent lines. So I'll probably do, hmm, how many did I do on this one? I did four on each side of the center line. So let's go to the machine and get that done. So I'm going from stitch line to stitch, edge to edge. So I'm going to drop my needle right down into Uh, the thread from the previous line of stitching. Back stitch once. Okay. Lift and turn and start a presser foot distance away, the edge of the presser foot, which is about a quarter of an inch on with this machine. And I'm just going to run right along the edge of my presser foot, that previous line of stitching. I'm going back over to the other side. So we're going to be going back and forth so that I'm keeping my stitching on the right side of my needle. So that's now two lines on either side. We're going with a third here. So now I'm going to come in here clean up all my threads.
All right, that's all of our threads cleaned up. Now we can go over and think about our grommet placement. So you can see the stitches there, and that's going to be our line of the book. Okay, so now we need to think about grommet placement. So we need to think about how our books are going to sit in there. Well, let me show you how this works, how it's able to hold six books and be able to change those books out. So I have two held together with elastic that slips behind this elastic and that is holding this book. Okay? The same on this side. This is how it's able to hold six books. You could probably easily get more books in there. Now I do know that I did some incorrect is making this one and my grommets are closer together on the bottom than they are the top and I will tell you that I prefer the bottom fit better than the top fit that's just kind of part of creative play you're working out what's going to work better um, I did not put my center elastic in because I only put one um, grommet here and I didn't have or I didn't only put yeah grommet here and I didn't have the um, grommet stop for the inside. So what I'm going to do on the next one is I'm going to put two grommets and I can come back and do that on this one as well so that it'll work a little bit better. So let's put this back together. So we're just slipping the elastic in to the center of the book like this. Now we're going to take a set of two that are held together with elastic and slip that behind this book. And now we have three books that are being held together, held into the book with this one elastic. Okay? Same thing for the other side. That first book gets slipped into the center. Or the first elastic gets slipped into the center of the first book. And this one goes next to it. So you can see when it's open, this bottom part just sits more nicely. Than this top part. See how it kind of creates that bulge right there? So I know that on the next one I want all of my grommets to be this close together. And these are about a half an inch distance apart. And I measured it by my quarter inch lines. So I want two spaces, three lines of stitching between each set of grommets. And I'm going to put two in the bottom, two in the middle, and two at the top. So I have my piece here. So I have some gray elastic. I have my grommet set here and I'm going to use the gray grommets. Now you can use a contrast or coordinating color as you want. You can do it to match your books. Um, all of the books in this one are gray black and sort of a cream color. So I'm going with gray black for my entire book. So I know that I'm going to need six of these. If I have six, I'm going to need my setter, my hole punch, and my anvil. And I'm also going to need six washers. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So now I'm going to use my Tandy leather pen and I'm going to mark where I want all of my holes to be punched. Now, if you have a leather hole punch, you don't have to use this one. You can see where I've used this one on a couple of projects. Um, this hole punch will work just as well. You're going to want, actually, the largest hole punch on this one is still smaller than this. So I'm going to say, it's not. So I'm going to mark where I want my hole. So I want it about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Actually, we the edge on this, from the edge on this one, I think. I think, where's my ruler? Oh well. 
yeah I went a half an inch from the edge on this one which I'm fine with so we're gonna go a half an inch up from the edge and this is our center line so I'm gonna mark here and that's our center one two there okay and I'm gonna do the same thing on the top there and there and I want to find the center of my book now this is nine and a half so four and three quarters is our center and I'm gonna put my grommets in the same spaces on there so that I have three lined up on each side okay and I'm gonna punch my holes the middle holes are the only ones that I might have a little bit of issue with this but we'll see make sure I'm centered there first thing I want to do is see if that's going to work so the way this anvil set works is you're going to put your grommet the front piece on over that little nib that's sticking up and then we're going to put that's not going to work because this this hole is not big enough that's fine so this isn't going to work because the hole isn't large enough so I'm going to come in here with my hole punch and as best I can center it over and give it a tap I don't think I gave it a hard enough tap I really shouldn't be doing this on this mat but here we are so I'm doing my best to make sure that my I'm even that should be going through all of those layers with ease there we go Now that did cut some threads, but you know what? I'm not going to stress it. I'm trying to make sure these are lined up nicely. Now that all of our holes are there we can start setting these so we're going to put our front piece on to our the peg there and we're going to press our work and make sure that the edge of that ring the edge of this piece is sticking up through the back of the fabric or through the interior of our work here and now we're going to take our set setter and one of these washers so the washer is going to go on okay so now that we have that on there we're going to take one of our washers here and mountain up so it has a mountain on a valley it's a little bit concave convex whichever way you, you're holding it you're going to put that on there and make sure that it's going over that ring as well now we're going to take our setter and the end that has the hole in it is going to go over that piece there and then we're going to tap it and as you can see there that rolls the back part down over the washer and it's set okay so let's do that again and then I'll finish setting the rest and we'll show you how to measure out your elastic OK, 
Okay, so we have our piece all ready to go here. And now we're going to start measuring out our elastic. Now this is 1 64th, I believe. No, 1 16th elastic that I ordered from Amazon. Yeah, 1 16th. So the way we're going to feed this through is the only place that your elastic is going to be exposed on the outside is right where your grommets are at. So we're going to go in this side, up and out, the top on the same side, in here. Now I'm going to we're going to pull it through this way. Now we want this to be tight, but not so tight. I can, I can trim this afterward. So we want this to be tight and that it's taut, but this still lays flat. We don't want it to curl up like this when it's when it doesn't have any books in it. We want it to be flat. So I'm going to tie a knot. And you can tie a knot in this. You can um, use the, uh, what are they called? The bead crimps. You can use those. I think that looks good. There we go. That's still. Make sure that's nice and tight. And now I'm going to trim this off. It's not going anywhere. So there's that piece. So we can go ahead and decide that we want this book to be in the front. So we're going to open it to the middle. Like so, this one can go in the back. And that is two books in it. Well, this one is absolutely designed to have more books than that in there. So we're going to go ahead and do our elastics for the other two sets. So what we're going to do is measure it twice. Give it about an inch, and we're going to need two of those. You can tie it around the books if you'd like. I've made a few of these at this point, but I've gotten used to uh, putting it together. So let's. Oh, and this is. I wasn't happy with that. So I'm going to tie an, a knot in this. And before I pull it tight, I'm going to want that to be. Looks good. So now this is going to go through the middle of this one. And then through the middle of this one. And it's going to go be together like that. Now we can take this and slide behind this one. And there's one set of three done. So now this one, we're going to do the same thing with. Trim that. I didn't trim the other ones, did I? So we'll go through the center of this. I like to make sure my knots are in the middle of a book somewhere, just so they don't show on the outside. Through the middle of that. I'm going to slide it right behind this book. And there we go. There's all six books in there. Now the thing we're going to do next 
is we want something to hold it closed. Now I'm actually going to use um, bead to mine. So I'm going to need to cut a piece of elastic that is going to wrap around the book and secure it closed. So I'm just going to kind of wrap it around like this, give it a little cut. So we've got that piece of elastic and this ended up being about, it's about 12 inches, a little under 12 inches. So now I'm going to take a um, jump ring, uh, attach my charm to it. It's like I can't, this charm is in my way and I can't get a good grip on it to get it closed properly, but it's okay. What I'm doing right here is a no-no in closing rings. It's all right. This is probably going to be mine anyway. So now I'm going to slip that onto there. And this is going to end up being tied inside the book. But I need to make sure, actually what I can do, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to run it through. So it's going to go in and out the other hole. And I can turn it so that the knot is on the inside in just a minute. That can be heat set with a lighter, but then this can get turned so that it is inside. There we go. So there is our Midori style travel journal, completely homemade from start to finish book. So then when you want to get into it to do whatever you want to do, you have your six books here to record or journal or doodle to your heart's content. And then this is just going to go right back over it just like that. Hello. There we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this project and uh, I'd love to see it. If you make one for yourself, please tag me on Instagram at Lady Anominant and I will see you all next time. Bye. Somewhere here I have another. Why do I keep losing things? Time to pull out the big guns. Of course, they're going to do road work now. Sorry about that. Had a little, uh, I'm in farm country. Tractors go by all the time.